air conditioning on 2017 Honda Civic. So here's another one. 31 PSI on the low side, 100 on the high side. Body collision, new condenser. I always like in some of the body shops when I go into and they have stuff turn apart because this is one of the only and few times I could take true temperature readings of the air entering the evaporator because when they have this cover off, I can actually get my sensors inside there. And hold on, I want it on fresh air. I can see I don't have fresh air on. Uh, there we go, now it's on fresh air. Because I want to load over the evaporator. So now you can see I have it on fresh air. And you can see both my sensors in there taking the air temperature of the mixed air from the hot air that comes off of the hot air from the condenser. Then the hot air after the cold air gets heated up through the heat of the condenser. Then it hits the radiator, picks up some more heat from the fans, hits the exhaust manifold, picks up some more heat. Then it would travel under here as a warmer air and then get sucked right down into the evaporator on a cold day to give me a nice heat load over the evaporator when it's too cold outside. Something's better than nothing when several months of the year you're always below 60 degrees or hovering somewhere right around there. And okay, it looks like I don't have that sensor connected or turned on. Do I have it turned on? No, I do not. Oh yeah, I do have it connected on. Why did I lose connection? Come on. And that's about it nothing special i've done a, a bunch of these hondas for the videos and everything like that um this is a variable displacement compressor and actually let's do a little test right here let's see 31 105 section line 62. let me Put this on, let's close off the warm air that is going in there and let's recycle cold air across the evaporator. Let's recycle cold air. I gotta bring this out, out here because it will close on my units and it won't let that dampener close. So now, let's put it on recycle. Now we're on recycle. So now inside here, the air is like 50 degrees. Let's close this door because the air that comes in here falls, comes down underneath here and goes right back up and gets sucked into the fan underneath here. So now it's nice and cold inside there. And 32 on the low side. Wow, wait a minute. We have like 70, 80 degree air coming off of here getting sucked down into the evaporator. That would normally give you a higher low side. But wait a minute. I just closed off. As you can see, you see it's closed. Now when you put cold air over the evaporator, isn't the low side supposed to drop? Why did it go up? This is why you don't use rule of thumb and try to fill by pressures. This is a variable displacement compressor. All the sensors are taking over and commanding the compressor constantly to bear a little load on it and look at you didn't see much happen on the high side but we have no load on it now before we have like 80 90 degree air 70 80 90 degree air getting sucked down right into the evaporator and now i have it closed and there's no difference don't know how many times i gotta tell guys stop trying to use rules of average rules of thumb and everything you heard about in the past and all these guys who read all these books about HVAC and refrigeration and everything like that, when you're applying those methods to these kind of systems, that's like the idiots who go out to mini splits or big BFR units and they go for beer can cold and say, oh, the suction line isn't cold enough or the pressures don't look right. 
So if they're on a big VFR, maybe they'll pump in another 20 pounds, 30 pounds of refrigerant in the system and take out a compressor. They do this all the time. Get an old refrigeration guy with 20, 30, 40 years of experience or an HVAC guy. He goes on his first VFR, he grabs that pipe and goes, it's not beer can cold. He throws his gauges on there. He goes, oh, that doesn't look right. It's low on refrigerant. He throws in a freaking one or two jugs of uh, refrigerant and takes out a $40,000 system. And uh, I've actually had that happen on one of my units, my personal units too. Some idiot hired an idiot who had 20 or 30 years more experience than me go out there and try to diagnose a, a not cooling properly system because the air filters were plugged up on like eight of the air handlers. I mean, literally plugged up solid. And one blower motor on one of the evaporators was literally dead and broken. And the guy diagnosed it as being low on refrigerant and just wiped out a system. And I see this on cars too. Guys would go, oh, that's not where it could be. It's low. So they'll start pumping in cans of refrigerant. And maybe it got cooler for a while under those conditions. And the customer goes drive somewhere hot and he drives for a while, takes out a shaft seal, burns a clutch, or burns up a compressor. So for those of you who don't even can't even comprehend this yet, it'll take a while. It's something you have to learn after several thousand vehicles. Um, and the vehicles are changing again. Now that we have heat pumps coming to automotive, if you aren't used to heat pumps and the heat pumps that are in automotive are not operating the same as heat pumps on residential in regular HVAC. So the guys who are uh, air conditioning HVAC guys for residential don't try to apply your knowledge of HVAC residential to an automotive heat pump. Uh, you will get burnt or actually the compressor will get burnt. All right, I'll see you guys. Adios.